drawings without text and dimensions are pretty useless. So in this chapter we're going to look at the annotation tools, that is text and dimensions. There are several dimensioning tools which we'll look at, and we're going to look at the text and the callout later. Let's start with looking at text, because nearly every drawing needs some text. We have a text tool, this one over here, and we also have commands for formatting our text. If we go to text on the menu bar, you could choose the font. You notice what happens with that. You could choose the size, the style, and so on. But the really quick way to do it is to choose format text. This gives us the ability to choose the font, the size, the style, and the alignment. We may want to come back and use this same setting again. We could save that as a style. Click on the Save button. Let's call it exactly what it is. Arial 20 point. You could call it large text, small text, but I find that giving it the font name and the size makes choosing it a no-brainer. You know exactly what it's going to be. Click OK. Now let's try that again and change this to 10 point text. We'll turn off the bold and we'll change the alignment. Now we can save that again and we can call it Arial 10 point. So we now have a 20 point text and a 10 point text and we can choose them quite easily from that pull down menu. Click OK. We can also choose the text style from this pull down menu this one here. So this makes it very quick. Once we've saved it in our file, we can grab our text style directly from this pull-down menu. You might notice that I've also got some default content. These are text styles stored in my library, which you could add to. Let's start by using 20-point text and we'll create our labels. So just touch that point so we get an alignment point, then click. This is my plan view. find the center of that, come down, this is my front view, enter. Now you might notice that when I choose the difference between return and enter I get a different result. So if I hit the return key, that's the enter key on a Windows machine that's near the letters, it creates a new line. If I hit the enter key on the far right hand side of my keyboard, that's by the numeric keypad, it exits. That's quite handy. One of the other things we can do is to edit text. Let's just drag a copy of this over here. So I'm dragging that with my Option and my Shift key held down. If I was on a Windows machine, it's my Command key and my Shift key. And on a Macintosh, it's the Option and Shift. And then double click. That gives you the ability to change this to a side view. Again, the Enter key rather than hitting the Return key. While we're looking at editing text, let's just have a look at this text block here. You'll notice there are tab settings here. And these tab settings can be adjusted just by dragging that little angle back and forth. We could change this plate, and we could change this to construct from. Construct from mild steel plate. And you might notice there's a, there's a hard return, a carriage return there, which we could remove. Then there's a tab which we also need to remove. So that's a way of editing the text. We can also check the spelling of text. So if something is selected, like that one, we can go text and we can say check spelling. Or you can right click on a block of text and choose check spelling. And it should find a mistake. Galvanized is not spelt in the American way. Actually it's spelt in the um, English way, so we could click on the Learn button and tell Vectorworks to learn that way of spelling it, and that way it won't ask me again that that's wrong. Or I can just ignore it. Ignore that. Shell is definitely spelt wrong, so let's change that. Or we could say Change All, and it'll fix all the spelling mistakes that are the same in this block of text. If nothing is selected when you go Check Spelling, so text on the menu bar, check spelling. It will ask you which things to check. So we can check viewports, worksheets, records, all kinds of stuff. One of the neat techniques is the ability to find and replace text. So we could look for anything that was bright red and replace it with cool blue. 
So this is going to only do the active layer, but it's going to replace all instances of that. And one occurrence was found. What about if we do a little bit more with that? Let's find and replace text. Let's find a space view and replace with just a space. Let's do that. Three occurrences found. Notice it just got rid of my view. Everywhere that I've written the word view, it's gone. So that's kind of a neat thing you can do with finding and replacing right through your document, finding a material that you want to change, and then changing it right through the document. We have the ability to wrap text. You might notice that it's got these little handles on it now. If I click here, there's a lot of text up here, so let's wrap that, and let's pull that in a little bit, and you'll notice that it now forces a, a change or a line break so that the word will be fitted in. So, for example, the word plate can't be fitted onto that line, so it creates a break and puts plate there. And this one, B can't be fitted in there, so there's a line break. And then hot dip galvanized was a forced break, a forced line break. That's if you want VectorWorks to automatically wrap your text for you.